Lesson 1.3, Properties of Addition and Multiplication. The commutative property of addition says, if the order of the add-ins change, the sum stays the same. So 4 plus 2 are add-ins. It's equal to 6. We can change the order of the add-ins to 2 plus 4, and it still equals 6. The sum stayed the same. The commutative property of multiplication says, if the order of the factors change, the product stays the same. So our factors are 4 and 2. We do 4 times 2, that's equal to 8. We can change the order of the factors to 2 times 4, and it still is equal to 8. The product stays the same. The associative property is also called the grouping property. The associative property of addition says, if the grouping of the add-ins change, the sum stays the same. So we have the add-ins 2 and 3 and 5. We can add them grouping the 3 and the 5 together. That's 8. 2 plus 8 is equal to 10. Or we can group the 2 and 3 together and get 5 plus 5, which is equal to 10. And the associative property of multiplication says if the grouping of the factors change, the product stays the same. So we can multiply 5 times 6, which is 30, then multiply 30 times 2, which is equal to 60, or we could multiply the 2 and the 5 factors together. That's equal to 10, and 10 times 6 is equal to 60. The product stays the same. The identity property helps a number keep its identity. The identity property of addition says the num sum of a number and 0 is that number. So adding 0 won't change the number's identity. 5 plus 0, he stays a 5. And the identity property of multiplication says the product of any number and 1 is that number. Multiplying by 1 won't change a number's identity. We have a 5 times a 1, he stays a 5. So notice in the addition one, it uses a 0, and in the multiplication one, it uses the number 1. To add two or more add-ins using mental math, we can use the commutative and associative properties of addition. We have 3 plus 19 plus 17. It's equal to 19 plus 3 plus 17. We change the order. We can change the order using the commutative property. We can group the add-ins using the associative property to add compatible numbers first. 3 plus 17, that's equal to 20. Now we just add the 19. We can use mental math. 3 plus 17 is equal to 20. 20 plus 19 is equal to 39. Compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to compute mentally. They may equal a multiple of 10, like 3 plus 17 is equal to 20. So remember, multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. They may equal 100, like 4 times 25. Here we have 4 times 9 in parentheses times 25. We can change the order using the commutative property, put the 4 here, put the 9 here, and the grouping was changed using the associative property. Instead of grouping the 4 times 9 together, now we're grouping the 4 times 25 together. We can multiply this in our head. We can think of four quarters in a dollar. That's 4 times 25 is 100. We multiply that times 9. We get 900. Without using the properties, we might multiply 4 times 9, which is 36, and then have to multiply it by 25. I don't want to have to do 36 times 25 with mental math. Using the commutative and associative properties of multiplication, we can multiply 4 times 25, which equals 100, and multiply that times 9, which is equal to 900. We could even group it this way and put the 4 times 25 up here. So let's talk about the distributive property. Here we have 5 times 29. We can think of this as 5 times 20 plus 9. The distributive property says multiplying a sum, so that would be the sum, these would be the add-ends. Multiplying a sum by a factor is the same as multiplying each add-end 
by that factor than adding their products. And we use multiplication and addition. So for 5 times 29, we have 5 times 20 plus 9. That's equal to 5 times 20 plus 5 times 9. We distribute the 5 to multiply it to the 20, because there's a multiplication sign here. And we distribute the 5 to the 9 and multiply it. And because there's an addition sign here, we've got an addition sign between the two sets of parentheses. 5 times 20 is 100, and 5 times 9 is equal to 45. We can add 100 plus 45 to equal 145. So this helps us multiply 5 times 29 using mental math. We didn't need paper and pencil. You can think of the distributive property as a mother bird trying to feed her little baby birds in a parentheses nest. She doesn't want one of them to go hungry, so she has to make sure that each one gets fed. She can't ignore one. So the 5 has to go to the 20, and it has to go to the 9. We can't forget one of the add-ins. The distributive property can also be used with multiplication and subtraction. We had 5 times 29. We can think of that 29 as a 30 minus 1. That's equal to 29. We do 5 times 30 minus, because there's a minus sign here, 5 times 1. And 5 times 30 is 150. And 5 times 1 is 5. We subtract 150 minus 5. That's 145. Same answer that we got here when we used addition. So this helps us multiply 5 times 29 using mental math. Back in fourth grade math in chapter 2, in video 212, in fact, which is linked in this description, we learned about the order of operations. And the order of operations tells us to do operations within parentheses first. So for 5 times 29, we would do 20 plus 9 first. That's how we got the 29. But we can rewrite the equation by distributing the 5 to each number within the parentheses. We have 5 times 20 plus 5 times 9. That's 100 plus 45. That's equal to 145. So we can break apart a large number, like 29, into numbers that are easy to multiply, like 5 times 20. Then add or subtract their products. We can solve this in our head. Distribute means to deal out or give some of to each. So the distributive property lets us multiply a factor to each number. So we have 5 times 2 plus 3. We do 5 times 2, and we distribute the 5 to the 2. We have 5 times 3. We distributed the 5 inside the parentheses, within the parentheses, to each add-in. Associate means to connect join, be friendly. So the associative properties let us group friendly numbers. We can group 25 times 4 because that's equal to 100 and multiply that first and then multiply it by 7. That's 700. And the word commute means to travel to and from going either direction, home towards work or work towards home. So the commutative properties let us change the order or direction that we add or multiply. So 4 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 4. 4 times 3 is equal to 3 times 4. The order doesn't matter. So it's like driving from home and getting gas and then to work. So if that's 4 miles and that's 3 miles, the distance is 7 miles. And if you go to work, from, if you're at work and you drive 3 miles to get gas and then 4 miles to home, it's still a distance of 7 miles. So it didn't matter which direction we went. We can go in either direction. And the commutative properties help us do that. We can quickly perform mental math by using properties to group numbers so they're easier to add or multiply. If we need to multiply 3 times 83, we think 3 times 80. That's 240. Then we think 3 times 3. That's 9. 
Then we add the 240 plus the 9, it's equal to 249. So we could do that without paper and pencil. We could do that mentally. We have 56 plus 19 plus 4. We think, well, 56 and 4 are compatible numbers because they equal 60. Then we can add the 19, and 60 plus 19 is equal to 79. So the commutative and associative properties of addition helped us. Commutative, because we changed the order, we added the 56 and 4 first, and the associative helped us group them. We have 43 times 11, we think. 43 times 10, times 110, that's equal to 430. Then we do 43 times this 1, that's 43. And we add 430 plus 43. That's 473. So the distributive property and the identity property helped us do that one. The identity property was when we just multiplied 43 times 1, and it kept its identity of 43. And we distributed the 43 to the 10 and then to the 1. We can apply the distributive property in reverse by pulling out a common factor. We have the given equation of 7 times 10 plus 7 times 4. Well, both sets of parentheses contain the factor 7. So we can pull that 7 out, put it up here, and have 7 times 10 plus 4. We use the addition sign because the given equation uses addition. We cannot use the commutative property with division because it'll change a dividend into a divisor and change the answer. We have 10 divided by 5. 10 is our dividend and 5 is our divisor. Well, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. If we change their order, we'll have 5 divided by 10. That's a completely different equation. We have 5 split into 10 equal parts. That's equal to half. And we cannot use the commutative property with subtraction because it'll change the minuin into a subtrahend and change the answer. 10 minus 4 is not equal to 4 minus 10. So it works for addition and multiplication because the answer won't change. We need to find the property that each equation shows and draw a line to match. So look at this first one. We have 20 times 5 times 7 in parentheses, and it's equal to 20 times 5 in parentheses times 7. So which of these properties do you think was used? Remember, the associative property is the grouping property, and look, the grouping changed. So if you said associative property of multiplication, you're correct. Here we have 34 times 1 is equal to 1 times 34. Well, their order changed, didn't they? But do you notice something else about this? It's using the number 1. So if you said identity property of multiplication, you're right. The 34 is going to keep its identity, isn't it? What about 5 times 9 is equal to 9 times 5? We can see the order has changed. If you said commutative property of multiplication, you're right. If we can only match one dot to one dot on this side, we had to use identity property for this one because it had the 1 in it. If we could draw two lines, we could have said identity property and commutative property, couldn't we? So be careful on matching problems like this. If it had said draw a line to everything that it matches, to all the properties that it match, we could have drawn two lines. But it didn't. It said draw a line. And it said, find the property, not properties. So be very careful when you're using the distributive property. Think of that mother bird feeding her babies. She doesn't want one of the babies to go hungry, so every baby gets fed. So that factor is going to be distributed to 
every single thing inside that parentheses, okay? Our next lesson, 1.4, is going to be about powers of 10 and exponents. I hope you stay focused and have a wonderful day and keep trying, and I'll see you next time. Bye.